Well, I wanted to kind of show, even though we're not doing a uh, review of why Agile, I wanted to kind of show a history of how we've kind of gotten into a situation sometimes where it feels that teams are uh, continuously inundated with too much work, where there's a lot of thrashing and delays. So kind of a little, maybe a brief history of things. And while we do this, I want to, want to keep in mind some things that are uh, some of the things when I talk about lean that are important, which we talk about, we'll be talking about cycle time, which is how long it takes from when we start something until it gets done. But there's also queuing theory. A lot of times we think what we want to do is have a lot of throughput, have a lot of product built. But if you imagine a bank, say, where you're waiting in line, you know, if you, if you get a lot of people through the bank, but you have also a lot of people in line, that's not necessarily a good thing. So it's not just throughput, it's also the time it takes to get through things. And I want to consider these two things as, as we go through this next section, you know. And things started out at, you know, at some point in the past, it was kind of relatively easy. We had like one stakeholder, say a request was for 240 person days, and we had a 12-member team, so it could be done in a month, and it was relatively straightforward. The request came in, we got it done, it wasn't a big deal. But, you know, things get a little more complicated as we get more successful. Now we have maybe three stakeholders on the same team, so now we have, now we have three months to do it in, because they're working on all three. So all of a sudden, we're, we, we've, uh, our, our throughput is maybe the same, we're getting basically one a month, but our, our waiting time, our queuing time has gone to three months. And, you can imagine the position this puts the first stakeholder in. Hey, you take a month, now it takes three. And the difficulty with this is, of course, that, well, you have the same budget, but when you have three months, things get harder. It takes actually, you know, you have to forecast out three months instead of one. And it was hard enough when you were trying to do something and get a response. Originally, now your response time is three times longer. So things get tougher because we have to respond quickly. So, of course, the team says, well, you know, it's complicated. We got the UI, we got the mid-tier, we got data flow, we got enterprise data. So you know what? Since it's so complicated, everybody working on everything at once, maybe it would be better if we were specialized. So the idea becomes we go from this, where we're working on all three without any specialization, we kind of went to this with specialization. So now I've got, of course, teams working on my UI, mid-tier, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the problem is, of course, your UI team can't work on everything at once like that. So we kind of adjust it to work like this. And now we have all these teams working together. And we specialize. But of course, this doesn't work that well either because now you have to coordinate everything. So all of a sudden, you've got integration things at the end. But you've actually got more than that because you've also got to do not just integration, but testing. And now not just where you could test your one piece of function, you've got to test across all teams. So what had become a, what had started out as a fairly simple problem is a fairly complex problem. And of course, you can't just start these things and hope they integrate well, so we have to have some planning up front. Now, if you notice, what's happening here is that things aren't actually getting shorter, they're getting longer as we specialize. So specialization is causing a variety of difficulties. And we all know this, but the question is, why does this happen? And, and I would suggest that having an understanding of why things happen, even when it's obvious that you know that they do, is very helpful. Because if you understand why things are happening, you have a better grasp, you might say, of what to do about it. And if you imagine situations like this that people have been in, and I'm, I mean, I can't know that all of you have been in this situation, but I'd be willing to bet most of you have been in a situation where you're working with multiple teams and multiple skills and trying to do things simultaneously. And, and remember here, I'm, I'm still talking about something that's just a month, so it's not this big a project. But people tend to start, to start task switching. They tend to start having to wait for other people and things stretch out. So what had been three months is actually now longer because there's this extra planning work. Extra planning work because we have a lot of things in process. Extra integration work because we have a lot of things in process not to mention the less efficiency that each of the worker has because there are a lot of things in process. Now we're going to call this stuff work in process. It's actually what you're working on. And one of the things we'll want to look at is this notion that the more work you have in process, the more likely you are to have waste and low quality. And this is one of the big tents of lean. And in fact, if one looks at agile methods, you'll notice that a lot of what agile methods are about is actually to lower this work in process, but like I say, I want to get a little bit more explicit about this. Anyway, going on, you know, as this happens, you get more and more requests, you know, 
there's also this sense that, man, there's so much work to do. If you have a lot of people working for you and there's a lot of work to do, one of the things you start worrying about is how do we keep the people busy? <laughs> But actually, that's not really what you want to be look, working on. So here what we've done is we've specialized skills, and we've got people very busy. But actually, it's slowing us down taking this approach. And that's really partly what I wanted to, to see. So the question is, instead of remember where we started with this, the real idea is what we want to do with something like this. In other words, instead of working on them simultaneously, get one, then another, then another. Now, there are quite a lot of reasons why this is politically difficult. And we'll actually have to pay attention to this. It's obviously nice, <coughs> excuse me, it'd be obviously nice if we could, in fact, get request one in and out, request two in and out, request three in and out. You can imagine the stakeholder for request three will be a little nervous. What happens if request one doesn't happen in time or request two doesn't happen in time? And like, why should I wait so long anyway, even if they do? So there are other issues that have to take place, which is some sort of certainty that, in fact, we can do this. And second of all, that in fact request one and request two, that maybe um, the team is satisfying the smallest piece of functionality that, uh, that will satisfy them. That way I can get to request three. It lowers their risk for request three. Uh, those of you who haven't heard the term minimum marketable feature, that is partly where, where, this, where this helps. In other words, what's the smallest piece that I can do to say stakeholder one? that will be marketable that he could release, so then I can go on to the next minimal marketable feature for stakeholder two. And if you're working on the smallest thing in, that's useful in the most efficient way, then even if the request three, stakeholder three, is delayed, it was actually delayed probably for good reasons, or at least you got, you, you got feedback that it was, and you know you weren't working on more than what you needed to. But this is really kind of the issue here. Is, well, how do we work on things efficiently, and how do we work on them effectively? So there, there are a variety of issues here about well, how do we pick what we are going to pick to work on, and then how do we do it in the most efficient manner. Okay. So there's this question then, that's where we are. Then the question is, well, is there a better way to actually manage this? And the notion is, in lean, is fast, flexible flow. How do we actually get an idea in and value out in a very quick way? And that's, that's really what we... That's really what we're going to talk about. Now, the, the thing is, when I talk about product development, I want to talk about software as product development. And, and this is sometimes confusing to people who are, say, in an IT organization, because in a sense, you don't have software product in an IT organization. But you can still talk about it as product development, because really, product, software in and of itself doesn't do, it isn't useful anyway, even to those who are building products. Software is actually a piece of the bigger puzzle. It's a piece of what enables the product. So if you have, like, say, software, embedded software in a camera, people don't really care about the software. They care about the camera. In an IT organization, it's not the software that's important. It's the services that the software supports. So when we're thinking about building software, what we really should be thinking about is what are the services or products that the software supports? You know, what does the customer need? What are the, how are we going to build this? And then building it itself. So regardless of whether you're an IT or a product company, uh, we need to think of software as a means to the ends of the services and products that are useful. So I like to think of software as product development because we're discovering what, what's necessary. And one way to graphically think about this is I'm going to get these ideas in, like, okay, we're going to build this stuff into my software team, and then they're going to actually build the software, and now I have good values out. But Maybe it's a little more complex than this. It's not just one pipeline. Uh, it's really better maybe to think of it <coughs> as I've got two pipelines. Um, I can select what we want to work on. This is actually part of the product management organization. And then they can feed the development teams. And then the development teams build something, and, and of course, we get feedback back. So the left side you could think of as, as this is the the group that is deciding what to work on, and the right side is the 